This clip you are about to watch is to sensitize you on the consequences of crime and its effects in families, homes and society at large. I would love to start by introducing our prison conditions to you so you may know what you are getting into by rejecting Christ Jesus or refusing to embrace salvation while partnering with crime or insane, which is cancer of the soul. All the prisons rent all scatter everywhere. Worry prison, okay? Mona look the worry prison, okay? Everywhere don't free. Mona release people. Governor should release people. Governor release people. Okay, prison. Who's there for you? Everywhere don't spoil. Everywhere don't scatter. What you are seeing here is our prison condition. Our prison condition is like hell on earth. They are highly congested and anyone who chose to live a sinful life is preparing him or herself to partner with this condition. The food you eat in the prison is not far from what you are seeing here. To be frank, it's worse in some prisons than this. When you find yourself in these four walls called prison, you are guaranteed of one of these two options. Coming out very sick or die of one of the deadly diseases which is common to almost all our prison facilities. In December 2019, we had so many inmates electrocuted in Ikoi Prison, Lagos State because of congestion. Naked Wire made a contact with Iron Bed and they shocked five people to death instantly while many ended up seriously wounded in hospital. This led me to ask you this question. Does the mundanity or vanity you are chasing worth risking your life to this extent? If I, Christian Okezich, who can knew what I know now, I would have not get involved in anything called crime which led to my eight horrible wasted years in Swedish prison. In this condition, there are so much agitations which activate brutal fighting very often in the prisons and could lead to death or permanent disability. Turning away from crime and come to Jesus today would be the wisest decision you ever made. I took that decision while I was in prison. Peace and calmness was restored upon my life. The most agonizing in choosing wrong path instead of salvation is the pain we give to our parents and agony driven into the victim's family. Many of them are like that. Many of them, many of them are like that. Regarding these people you are seeing here, many of them are very ill, very sick. I'm talking about real sicknesses such as HIV, hepatitis, tuberculosis, hyena. Many of them are virtually dying, such as this one you see here. But there is one inside there that is dead. You can look at that one inside there. That young man you see there is gone. And I can assure you that their parents are not aware of what happened to him. So many other sick people inside the prison. And um, these people, they need medicine. That's why we run all these medical outreaches you are seeing here. This one here now, yeah, is for you. This one every morning, take. This one every morning, even we will support our guys so that there will be pap as well. Pap for you guys to be eating. See these bones that are coming out like this. It is not sickness, it's hunger. What you're seeing here are old people that are locked up because of their children. It is not that the old people committed crime. I say they are locked up in prison because of what their children did. In the case of this old woman you see here in Omar here, she has been in the prison for about eight years now, going to nine years, and she is 84 years old. This woman was arrested because of what the son did. How long have you been here, sir? This is seven years and was the problem. My son fought fight with my cousin brother, yeah. and that one get it. But he ran away. Your son ran away. Yes. Seven years and seven years and two. Then for them to locate my son, no way. For them to leave me, no way. That's why you're here. How long have you been here, sir? One in light to be for fifteen years he has been doing the case. This is heart tearing scenario. This old man you're watching here is hundred and ten years old. 
is held from Abia State, from Ungwa to be precise. What we youth are doing could cause pain to elders. Let's just be careful how we live our life from now on after watching these videos. Odigoma, you will not die here, Odigoma. Don't cry anymore, sir. Please don't cry anymore. This old man was 100 years old before he got his freedom and he spent 17 horrible years in the prison because of the crime the son committed. The man standing right by him is his son who committed the crime that he suffered for. Look at the case of this young talented sister called Joy Ojo who is presently in Ubiaja prison in Edo state for almost five years now. Joy Ojo is a young single mother of two, a bit stubborn though, but wrongly accused of killing her father. The father was beating her up one day, she was struggling to escape from her dad. As he was pursuing her, he fell down and hit his head on a hard furniture and died. She has been in prison now for about five years with her talent dying with her in the prison. Joy has written over 40 good songs but could not come out and sing it to the world. What a waste of divine resources. This could have been avoided with little or no effort of being among brethren in the house of God than hanging out with the young man who caused Joy to provoke her father. Kindly learn from her mistake by staying away from rebelliousness and adopt obedient lifestyle, please. Don't leave me, Jesus, don't leave me. Look at these two young biological brothers from Enugu who their parents are servants of God. They ended up in prison not because parents have not done what they should, but because of bad friends. They have been in a do prison now for almost five years because of wrong association. Choose your friends, please. If they are not saved, be careful for it is called unholy alliance and could lead you to destruction. Being at the right place is being in church where you will learn to live right, not being in gang or roaming around the street chasing shadow. Mm. So by God's grace, any moment from now we are coming out, and not only coming out, but we are coming out to become great ministers of God. Amen. Can you imagine the pain the parents of these two biological brothers will be going through now, wasting away now for over four years as well in the prison? We need to come together to restore orderliness among our youths. Some of them are just people they accuse and then they don't have, they don't have 5,000 naira to pay that very time police arrested them and they ended up in prison. So how much is it that is holding you here? 3,000 naira. You mean 3,000 naira? I have option of 2,000 naira. 2,000 naira. So because of that you are inside this place. Okay. Have you been to court and they say 2,000 naira? Okay. It is a shame to be in prison for 2,000 naira. For me, I think it's a shame to pass. Uh, what's your name? Reiki Adaoda. Reiki Adaoda. Okay. Uh, what's the fine? 20,000 naira. Who say you pay 20,000 naira? George. The George. So you have been to court. Then you are just waiting to pay you and then you go. Yes. We will sort it out and have the fine. Two thousand naira, sir. Two thousand naira. How long have you been here? For five months now. Jesus Christ. Two thousand naira for five months. You have been here five months for because of two thousand naira. Okay, we'll sort that out that one quickly. We'll sort it out quickly so you can go home, okay? Oh, how long have you been here? I've been here to turn now for ten. For how much? Ten thousand naira is holding you here for two years and and many of them their case files are lost. Like in Kirik, you can see hundreds of them that have no case file. In over two hundred prisons are visited. Thousands and thousands of prisoners surrender their life to Christ. You would agree with me that it is better to surrender today than to go into the prison and face the deadly agony before you surrender your life to Christ. Don't you agree with me? In Africa's prison, we have so many women with babies inside the prison. Some of them got pregnant outside and then give birth inside the prison and some of them came with the baby from outside. In this girl case here called Blessing, she's epileptic. You know, falling down all the time with this baby in the stomach, it is abomination. This baby could die. 
she about five six months pregnant every time falling down with that baby in her stomach was quite disturbing we as a bounding grace foundation when we got to biaja prison and saw the situation we have to step in to get the medicines and other things needed and we have to pay the fine for her to go home and the reason why she's there was just because of this stubbornness our youth doesn't listen she got herself into it. Thank God that we have saved her from it. Now she delivered a bouncing baby boy. Lots of babies are born inside the prison and they are badly neglected. Abounding Grace Foundation has taken it upon us as a mandate to provide for them monthly. Uh, some of them we supply them diapers, some baby milk and all that. And their mothers also. A month and four days baby. Okay, all the death sentence come out here please. Hurry up. This one, this one is 30 years here, yeah? 30 years, and we have life sentences, we have death sentences here. Yeah? All of you that are standing here, the only way to be free is submitting to Christ Jesus, surrendering all. That's what I did, and it worked for me. And if you are willing, if you are willing, it will happen to you. And I call on that same name, Jesus Christ, that set me free to set you free. He is the one that set me free, and that same God is here to set you free. Heavenly Father, honor my word as a servant. Show them mercy. Show them mercy. As you are seeing these young boys here, most of them are raided, but some of them are in the prison because of aggression, fighting on the street. As you can see, my brothers here in South Africa, which is exactly the way I used to live before Jesus saved me. This is our youth's daily activity in South Africa, which has caused the South Africa's law enforcement agencies to cross their hands and watch Nigerians kill each other while they stood by them and watch, pointing our youth to the cavalry journey so they might be saved. Watch the police going to arrest the killer but couldn't stop the killer from killing, which means they are fed up of our acts in South Africa. Antidote to this is to evangelize, sensitizing our youth on the consequences of crime and its effect in our families. Being intolerant, that's what brought many of them in the prison. And if you look very well, look at these very young boys you are seeing there. Some of them are 16 years old, some are 15 years old. They are teenagers. And I can assure you that in Africa, very few places like Ghana is where I've seen juvenile prison. In Nigeria, we don't have juvenile prison. They are all mixed up. And when you are there, you can face anything. Anything can happen to you as a child. So as a teenager, stay away from trouble. Our youths are so, so much aggressive these days. I don't know what is causing it. But you can look at this young man here. Look at this man. He is serving death sentence now in Edo State, in Benin White House, because of aggression. He got angry with somebody and he used bottle to smash on the person's head. And the person died after one month. He entered into death sentence for that. Look at that other man there. He wasn't even the one that caused the fight. This old man, they attacked him in the farm where he's working. And he defend himself. He would have run away, but he defend himself with his merchants and everything. And the person died. He ended up in death sentence. So aggression doesn't pay. When you are too angry, please bite yourself. Eat yourself. Do something to curtail the anger. Don't act because if you act with the anger, the devastation that comes from it is always a prison time that follows. I've taken the lives of so many, I cannot count, I don't know the number. Mm. For this very offense that I'm facing here right now, I did not commit it. As you preach, I feel so remorse, I feel so much. I look at it and say, oh, this is my dream. I want to go out of this place and stand in the congregation of people ah, and preach the gospel. Preach the gospel to the heart of everybody. Let it not carry on. There is nothing in this life. How could this young boy lose his mind to drive into a woman and squash her waist? What do you think of this boy with no rage now? What do you think that's going to happen to him? Go to Bermash prison. You will find him there where he is starting all over. Let not to be acting first before he think later. I will seriously encourage all the youths that are here. Punch the wall when you're angry or do whatever that will give you a little pain and you walk away than to get yourself into big trouble like this. Because this young man will we spend quite a long time in prison because he has incapacitated this lady. Prison is not a place to be. You don't want to get there. 
I want you to please today, today, not tomorrow, think about what you're going to do with your life. And you start by doing what? Surrendering your life to Christ and then submit yourself so that you'll be properly mentored. <laughs> Look at this. This is exactly where courtesan on the street has gotten our youths. Pouring acid on each other's body to prove a point. I ask what point are they trying to prove them? I don't know. What could have gotten us to this point I'm asking? I believe it's because of lack of evangelistic youths. If we would have trained our youths how to go and win souls, we wouldn't be having all this problem. I was in Ikoi prison recently and there are hundreds of young boys that don't even know their left and right. They are all into courtism. You hear them saying that they've killed 20, 30, 40 people. And you look at them, how old are you? Sam? So 28 years old. When did you get into that? I was 16 when I got into that. Where's your phone? Where's your phone? Where's your phone? This little exchange of blue cost this young boy his life. Is there any damage in walking away from the street fights other than them calling you a coward? They didn't call you a coward, but you walk away with your life. Is that not the whole future of this young starber is wasting in jail right now. Why the other young boy never got to repent before he got his life wasted? How can you explain a young boy like this being buried and the parents are in pain at this very young age? How would you explain that? You and I could have saved the life if we would have gone out there to talk to them about Christ. This young man in USA spent 21 years in prison carrying gun up and down on the street and the mom was in pain for 21 good years. This scenario got me thinking about what I did many years back killing my own biological father. Don't you think the pain of parents losing their youth at early age as this could cost their life? I'm a living testimony to this because I remember how my father got to hear that I was sentenced to serve 15 years. He became so sick and he died. I don't. I don't want to hurt my mother no more. Man. Nobody mother should have to go through this, man. Dude, let's do what's right now because this is what the after effect is. This scenario we see in America every day. We see it in UK as well, time to time. And it's also happening in Nigeria here and many countries in Africa. Where reckless shooting can just take a life of a young man away. The war was the reason why the young man's life was lost. What happened? Is it not stubbornness? I'm advising you all the youth, please avoid this scenario. Yo. Avoid this kind of thing happening to you because you are causing your parents pain when you die. You know what? When the police point gun at you, lift your hands up. It doesn't cost you to just surrender for that minute. In the court, you'll be vindicated if you are not doing anything wrong. But if you commit any crime, then you do the time. Bro. Yo, y'all retarded? It wasn't a threat bro. right now, bro. How many times, how many times have you been in prison? Give out the microphone. Seven times. Seven times. But the world came and you decided to surrender all. Is that decision from you? I can hear you. Yes. And some of these people that you see on a waiting trial, very long awaiting trial, many of them are innocent. I spent 19 years for waiting trial. 19 years awaiting trials. In Lagos prison, where we have 3,900 and something prisoners, in one prison, quickly medium prison, 75% are innocent because they are about 80% on a waiting trial. You cannot call somebody who is on a waiting trial a criminal. He's not convicted. And at the end of the day, some spend 10 years, 15, 20, 25, before they discover that they are innocent and they will send them home without compensation. You don't want to get there. Stay away from trouble. I know you to where you are. Then I said, come in the big is on that over here. Yeah, Okay, shut up. This world okay? This world. Amen. The mercy of God is upon you. The mercy of God is upon your life. Fear not. Sorry, that is settled. It is settled.
you don't want to end up here and you truly believe that what you see here is reality it's not just a measure I'm calling you now to surrender your life to Christ today might be your last chance don't let anything make you miss this night now run fast and be my phone here come on quickly hurry up hurry up it can only be God that will do this if not for Jesus Christ you would have been gone now look at this suit that you see coming out here this is Porta called Night of Glory hosted by my father in the Lord Dr. Reverend David Will. thousands of them came to Christ changed their life dropped their guns dropped their knives whatever you are doing you have to think of these people that you leave behind I don't know what you are waiting for I think today will be your night it will be a right choice for you to look at what, look at how they are running out to the altar you see this you see the, how they are running to the altar let it be your own story tonight that you leave that your seat, come out to this altar, and I will pray for you and your life will not remain the same.